Hello, my Facebook family. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I am Crystal Dillard and welcome to my Crystal Loves Texas podcast. I love having you here every Wednesday and I promise today I will not disappoint. You know, we've been doing our series on justice restored and what we are really featuring and focusing on is making sure that we are a champion of being able to get uh, voting rights restored for people who have been formerly incarcerated. And I get to go around and, and, and talk to a lot of people. And actually, I meet a lot of people just in passing and, and talking to them and learning their stories. Sometimes I just have to ask that person to come on and share with us because I feel that their story is so much of an inspiration. Now, a lot of you who watch this podcast may actually be familiar with the gentleman to my right um, because he is a pillar in the community and you may uh, already know him, but I'm going to introduce him to you. And today we are going to talk about, um, I want you just to hear his story because I was absolutely dumbfounded when I heard the story and he's so candid, but what he is more than anything is inspirational. He lets you know that no matter no matter how things, how tough things may be, no matter what type of missteps you may have made, that it's always a way to right that ship and to turn things around. And boy, has he done it in a big way. So I am going to uh, let my guest today, Mr. Roy Lascano, introduce himself and tell us a little bit about himself. Roy, hey, <laughs> thank you for that? coming. All right. Yeah, well, I'm Roy Lascano. I own uh, Third Ward's Finest Cuts in uh, Midtown. I also own a 365 event venue. I also own a pallet company. It's called 36 Ride Pallets. And uh, born and raised in Third Ward. He's being hum he's been real humble. Okay. He's been <laughs> humble. Okay. Yes. Roy was Roy was telling me he's 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 a Houston native, born and raised in Third Ward. Roy, but tell us a little bit about, and, and when we spoke last week, right. you told me a little bit about your background and some of the things that that you uh, grew up seeing and wanting and the, the uh, choices that you decided to make to get what you saw and you felt like you wanted. So tell us a little bit about that. Take us back. Okay. Well, it started on Jackson Street. I was, uh, I was born in a poor neighborhood. It was nine of us, five boys, four girls, and we stayed in a two bedroom, two bedroom apartment. And things was tough, you know. And we always yeah. just sat around and tried to figure out a way how to make it. Sometimes the lights get cut off, sometimes the lights didn't. You might come home, it may be food, sometimes it may not be no food. Yeah. But somehow my mom and managed to put everything together and get us on through there. So we ended up I ended up going to Lanier Middle School, Lamar High School, and uh Things were different for me. So I've seen the different picture. I've seen from being poor and people who had money. Yeah. So it was two different, it was two different things. So when I came home, I knew we were poor. Okay. Because yeah. of the friends that I had at school. At school, which they were rich. Yeah. Well, I wasn't say rich. I would say they was well. They were they were they were doing well for themselves. Very comfortable. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But uh so as as life went on, you know, our environment was real, it was real disturbing. So we had pimps, players, prostitutes. Those are the things that we grew up in. Those are the things that we seen. Okay. So, of course, uh, by growing up around that environment, you see those people then, and they look good. They, it, I mean, you know, the shiny jewelry, they got the nice cars, they got the pretty ladies, and all that is nice. But you look at them and you say, I want to be just like him. Yeah. Until you find out and realize what he does for a living. Okay. Yeah. And then you're on your path. You're on your path to down that road. And like you were telling me, even though your family was 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 and your mom was telling you constantly to do the right thing and to go in the right direction. Sometimes what's shiny just is 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 more fun and more exciting. It's seen that way. <laughs> yeah. And the thing about it is some of the guys you said, some of the guys that uh, you told me a story about uh, one of the guys. Um, who uh, you know? Who would come around and just give give money right, to the right, kids? Right, right, yeah. And that know, was a way to hook them in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I mean, and, and his mo and his his, his his he meant well. Yeah. He meant well because he gave everybody money and said, "Hey, go to school, listen to your parents." But then at the same time, when you you found out what he done, 
Hey, he was a drug dealer. Yeah. So he had the nice cars tonight. He had the beautiful women. He had the, the yeah. lot, lots of uh, money in his pocket. Yeah. So those are the things that we attracted to and everybody seen it and everybody wanted it. Right. Because we was already in a poor predicament as we were in as, as it was. So, of course, we want to make money. We want to be able to survive. We want to be able for our brothers and sisters to eat, you know. Right. So but at the same, but it wasn't it wasn't what it was all planned out to be. Yeah. And that's how I end up in jail. Okay. Well, 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 tell me a little bit about that. So, so this guy would come around and you, you decided at, at a certain point, how old were you when you were, uh, when you first kind of made the decision that you wanted to go ahead and get what's yours right now? I was 15. Okay. I was 15 years old at the time. That's high, high school, like freshman. Yeah. 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 And, um, end up doing bad throughout school the whole time. End up at a CLC. It was contemporary, I remember that. <laughs> contemporary learning center. Yeah. And um and in my my 12th grade years when when um they told they kicked me out of Lamar High School. They didn't kick yeah. me out. They told me if you can go to CLC and you can finish everything you've done, right? You can come back and graduate with your class. Okay. So I was like, all right, cool. You yeah. know, which was which was hard. Yeah. The hardest thing I possibly could ever have done. Wow, why is that? Because of distraction, because I was already having money. I was already having the yeah. cars. I was already having the women. I was yes. already, I was already living the life of a grown man already. Yeah. So I thought. Yeah. You know, I was already on my own. Yeah. So having to get up in the morning and go to school was like, I don't want to do that. Yeah. Yeah. So, but that the whole process, the whole process to get me here now. Yeah. It was definitely a struggle. It was a struggle. Well, you know what, Roy, you told me something um, and, you know, and, and, and we basically talked about this and you said that you were fine sharing this. You said the, the fantastic part and the part that I want people to focus on and to be able to see is where you sit today. Exactly. However, it wasn't an easy road getting there. It wasn't. So tell me about the first time you were arrested and the first time you found out and your family found out that you were going to have to be incarcerated. I was, uh, I was 18 years old at the time. Yeah. I had just, I had just turned 18. Yeah. Meaning I was old enough to go to the big house. Yeah. So I got, I got caught with a substantial amount of drugs. Right. And, um, went to court. They ended up giving me two years. First time, two years off the top, no right. probation, no nothing, two years. Wow. So we ended up going, going there, getting out. Yeah. But I had a good support system. And where did you go to that first time? Where did you go to? Ferguson. Okay. And where's yeah. that? What town is that in? Uh, Ferguson is uh, man. It was been so long ago. It, it's, it's been it's, so long it's, ago. It's some, somewhere in this part of this yeah, part of Texas. Right. Okay. So I went to Ferguson. Okay. Then getting transferred to Beeville on my way out. Okay. Then then went to uh, Huntsville. That's where they let you out at. Okay. And gave me a fifty dollar a uh, fifty dollar check and told me to have a great day and we'll see you on the next round. Okay. You, when you told me that, I, that was kind of hard for me to believe because I thought just being naive, I thought that when people are released, you, you, you kind of get some placement so that you can kind of get, you start getting your, your foot in the door, your foot up a little bit of a leg up. Mm -hmm. And you said, absolutely not. Oh no, that's not true. That's not true. No, that and so it forces you to come back into the same situation you just left because you're only doing what you what you what you're used to doing. Right. If you don't know anything else, you just know what you used to do and how to and how to survive, which then that survival mode kicks in. Right. So if you don't have if you don't have a support system, you go back, you go right back to doing it. And the same friends that were there, they still there. And they're and here they are. Right. Hey, I'm here. You know, if you need me. Yeah. They're willing to give you drugs, but they ain't willing to give you the money. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So, and then for you know it, you're, on a, you're in this circle. Well, let me ask you this. Would you say, you know, based on what you experienced, would you say that that lifestyle is more like a crabs in the barrel? They the People really don't want to see you get ahead? Or I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. Yeah. Because they... They're doing it. They're doing it not because they want to see you see Fail. you do bad. Yeah. They're doing it because they know you're in a bad position, but that's the position they're in also. So basically, they, it's like if I got a dollar and I can help you make a dollar 
and I know you're doing bad, I'm, I'm going to say, hey, well, this is what I do to get a dollar. You can get yeah. you a dollar like this, too, if you want to. Yeah. I can't give you my dollar because this is my dollar. Right. But you can make your own dollar. Yeah. I don't want to handicap you in this here. So I'm just going to say you have right. to. So you make your own dollar. So, so so really, they were trying to do it out of the goodness of their heart. But, but that's that's all. That, that's the good that they knew. That's the that's good that they knew. To, to, to help I mean, you out, yeah. Like I said, if you've been raised by wolves, you only know how to act like a wolf. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So you can't expect nothing else. So, of course, your your environment, the people you hang around with, those, and, that's, and you end up molding with them. And that's how you become everything that they are. What was that? What was that first situation as an 18 year old, very young man? What was that first situation like for you in prison? Was it you hear horror stories these days? You have reality shows about prison and we see the kind of things we don't know how much of it is staged. Right. But we see the kind of things that go on. What was that like for you the first day when you went? When in? Well, well, the first I mean, well, first you go to the county, you go to the Harris County Jail there. Um, it was back then it was uh it was uh 1401 franklin okay and uh, we were on the 10th floor and um you were among people that you know you it's, so it's almost like like hanging out wow so it's not really what people make it seem out to be it's not really that you okay. know so now it's just like a whole bunch of fellas just hanging out and we watching tv talking about what we used to do what we used to have and you know and all the things that we done and all right. that you know but then on then it's a different page when you get to prison though yeah like you, what so when you get when, when as soon as you get there you come on you get on the bus you get there you go through this line uh -huh. they sit you down they cut all your hair out. wow yeah clean shade and they give you some regular clothes and some sta uh, stainless steel boots because you're definitely gonna be you're gonna need them yeah so you then when they give you the boots they give you a, they give you a number which my old number was five eight eight seven three four Never yeah. forget it, which was an old number. It yeah. was an old number. So I started going to jail early, early, early before, you know, before before then. But uh, as soon as you get in there, it's the same routine. You start seeing people you know. Yeah. Now, suddenly now it's everybody's clicking things. So he's from Third Ward. Hey, well, all the Third Ward people so hang that's over how there. that gets together. Got gotcha. you. Yeah. yeah. You know, he's from he's from Northwood Manor. So all the people from Northwood Manor. Oh, he's he's with the um, Chulos. So all the Chulos hang with them, you know. Right. And, everybody get their own group of people that they hang around with. Yeah. And like I said, eventually somebody going to test you, of course. I mean, it's just, it's yeah. just, it's just, it's a lot of testosterone going on. In yeah. There, that's you know? what, that, that's kind of what I was getting to, you know, about, you know, did, did you experience the, the violence that some people, you know, you know, talk about that it being a, it being, you know, you, you, you're afraid to sleep. You don't want to get. No, not really. But I mean, because the environment that I came from was already there. Okay. I came from an environment of, not trusting people i came from an environment of seeing people how you know miss over people I, I came from the whole environment of not watching everything that everybody do because okay. you know at any point in time you can you you it could be you right yeah so so when me, me going there was it was it was a wake up but it wasn't really a wake up okay well let's let's come to the two years you you, you got released okay. you did your two years the world is your oyster. You come back, you got your your, your bus ticket and your fifty dollars. Right. So, from that point, did everything just go perfectly? How did it go from then? No, it didn't. So now you. So it. now you're. So now you're a criminal. You know. Now you're right. labeled as a person who has been to jail. Can't be trusted. Yeah. yeah, the, yeah. You know that the whole, whole thing. that whole thing. You know and. uh and finding a job was even harder than that because now that you have a criminal record, they want they want you to have you ever been to jail before? Is yes or no? And if you have, explain why. Right. So of course, you know, they put drugs, drugs, guns, they put all that into when you hear it, a person that never been and never been around that kind of thing. This is what right. they put together. Right. So now it's hard for you to get a job. Now it's hard for you to get an apartment. It's right. just hard for you all the way around. So now you're stuck and now you have to figure out. What is it that I can do so that I can get, because eventually your, your people are going to end up getting tired of you just leeching around. Right. You sucking up all the air, you eating all the yeah. food, you just laying around. Yeah. Now you got to start doing something because so now everybody's starting to get a little tense in the house now. Yeah. So now you figure out, I only do what I can do. Now you go back to yeah. doing the same thing because the $50 was gone that first day. Right. Right. You bought you, a, you, bought you something to eat and yeah. you bought you a pair of ten, new tennis shoes because tennis shoes was just the kind of thing to do. Right. So after that, you broke. You broke. 
and now you now it's almost putting the cat in the corner, yeah. trying to come out and trying to scratch his way and find his way. Yeah. So, but like I said, at the end of the day, it was it was. I didn't get here. Just, I just got here because I was raised right. I got it because I went through a lot of negative, right, or in order to get to the positive. So how did you? So 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 that 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 uh, that first time, you learned your lesson and you went ahead and turned your life around, right? No. Okay. Tell me about Absolutely it. Absolutely not. <laughs> Tell no. me about it. So, I didn't go back to selling drugs. Uh -huh. I found another way how to hustle. Okay. So which I was selling CDs at the time, movies. Uh huh. So movie that was a big thing back then. So you get all the bootleg movies, all of that kind of good stuff, and right. you'll find the dude, and he always had all the new movies that came out. So then, by me having already having the reputation that I had for having drugs, right? I had these people coming in and out this out this apartment, so they figured right. he has to be selling drugs, right? So the so of course task force runs in. There's no drugs. Right. But I got towers of these burners <laughs> with these CDs. Yes. And all of them are labeled. Yes. The it was night organized. Before Christmas, Friday, <laughs> the whole everything. Right. So I, so all of a sudden now, I'm looking at a whole new charge. It's called piracy. <laughs> right. It's it's called piracy. So right. it's called so it's taking credit for other people's project. Yes. Yes. And uh and I end up getting four years for that. Wow. Okay, so you go down the second time. Right. Same place, different different no, unit. No, different unit. This time it was on Beto. Okay. So I went to Beto, and then after I went to Beto for six months, and then the feds picked it up. Wow. Okay, that's a federal offense. It's a federal offense because, gotcha. and it says it, if you copy these movies. It's a, fe yeah, it's a federal, yeah, it's on there. Yeah, it's a federal offense. Of course, you see it, you read it, but you're like, ah. That'll never happen. That'll never yeah. happen to me. Yeah, no, not for this little stuff I'm doing anyway. Yeah. You know, it's not like I'm like I'm taking movies and I'm putting them on a big screen and right. you know, right? So, but no, yeah, it was. It, but I had enough of it to where they, where I was, I was considered to be a person that could actually <laughs> bring problems to the movie industry. Yeah, because I was taking money away from them from, right. from the people who actually made the movie from, from them being able to sell to sell it. yes so now with a federal offense that's different because now is it true that for a federal offense you have to do you do the the whatever amount of time that you're sentenced you have to do that amount of time or how does that go or well, can you it, get I mean you you get you, you get good you get good behavior also okay. but it's a point system you get you get judged on your points okay so the worse of your the worse of your points are, the more time you get. So I had okay. only been to jail one time before. Right. So it's not like I had an extensive background where okay. I was just real bad. But so I got four years. Okay. I did, and I did uh, three three years and twenty eight days. Okay. Okay. So you did most of your time on that that majority particular of offense. It, majority of it. I mean, due to a couple of fights, due to. Um, spazzing out you know just young yeah. and and you know and people talking to you too aggressive and you right. know and you be like yeah. i just got four years what the most can i do out of this right four years yeah i already did i'm you know so you thinking that's this gonna so ain't nobody really just gonna handle me any kind of way in there you know, right because you think I, i'm already at three years already one yeah. more year ain't gonna hurt none <laughs> okay <laughs> okay now well let me ask you this you did your your uh, your three years and twenty eight days. Right now, when you were in there, at that point, did you start to think about wanting your life to go in a different direction? When was the turning point for you? Well, the turning point came right as soon as I got out. It was I, I never I never forget this I never forget this gentleman. He said he asked me a question. He said. So what are you gonna do when you leave here? I say, man, I'm gonna get back out there and I'm gonna do my thing. Except I'm going to California this time. Okay. And he said, okay. He said, well, he said, let me just give you a good piece of advice. He said, you can't expect change. You, you can't expect you can't expect change. Right. If you're doing the same thing. Right. He said, if you go down the same road, he said, you'll be back. You'll be back. Yeah. He said, so order for you to do something, he said, you need to change the way you think. 
change. Okay. You got to change the, the way you're thinking. He said, because you're, you're thinking, you're thinking like, you're thinking like a person who, who, who is just out on the streets and just, and, and they have to be there. But I didn't have to, I had, I had a family. Yeah. You know, but me as a man, we got this ego. We don't want to ask nobody for nothing. Right. I want to be who I am, you know, and I, and that's just exactly what it is, you know, but that's how I end up, end up changing my life. That man told me that. He said, you, you do the same thing, you get the same results. And you said that came, didn't you tell me that that came from someone who was going to be in there for life? Yeah. 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 He yeah. had a life sentence. He had a life sentence. So and there was no, there was no way he was. He, he wasn't ever getting out. Yeah. Yeah. He was never getting out. Yeah. He had a, he had a, he, they gave him the the Rico Act, and what is that? Which mean? meaning he was he was a real he was a person who was a threat to society a, as a far predator. as no he was a threat to society because he was such a kingpin of selling drugs. Gotcha. Where he where he moved drugs from New York to to Los Angeles to Houston up to okay. Kentucky. He was he was that kind of person. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So so he really didn't have anything to to to, to lose or gain by telling you the truth. No, he didn't. He yeah. really didn't. He really didn't. But he, but he, but he seen me, and he knew I meant well. Yeah. Well, Roy, let me ask you this. Now, unlike a lot of our other guests who've been on the podcast, okay. you were not scared into rethinking your decision the first time. No. The second time after you had the conversation with this gentleman, what were your thoughts after you had the conversation with him? I need to change my ways. <laughs> I got to do better with myself. And how old were you at that point? I was 22. Okay. I was, no, I was, no, I was 25 at the time. Okay. I was 25. And, um, and how, how did you go about making, making, uh, putting your steps in order? It was, it was, uh, it was almost cause I started to change, change the way I, I looked at things. I mean, in prison, in prison okay. before I even got out. Right. So We've heard start, that a lot. It, start, yeah. it started in prison. You have to want to change or in there for the change to happen. Right. So, and I figured, I said, well, the last time I was in, in jail, I knew it was hard for me to get out. So I need to find myself a trade. I need right. to find myself something that I can do that I'm good at. Right. And Cutting hair was 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 my start. That was my starting point for me, and I learned that because we were so poor. My mama had went to Wine Garden, uh -huh. bought us a pair of clippers, and said, "I don't have I don't have money to get your hair cut every week." Right. Y'all need to figure it out. Yeah. And we start practicing on each other. And every day wasn't a good day. <laughs> <laughs> we went to school with some messed up haircuts. Even went to school. I never forget this. <laughs> I, my edge was pushed back so far <laughs> to where I cut my hair all the way bald so that it can grow back because I was already right. getting ranked down and it was cold outside. I had a stocking cap on. Uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, the teacher walked in. Good morning. Good morning. Good mm -hmm. morning. Have a seat. Uh, Mr. Lascano, you're going to need to take that hat off in, right. in this classroom. <laughs> and I just kind of sit there and shook my head and I said, oh, Lord. And uh, I didn't take it off. And then, of course, I was drawing attention to myself at the time. I didn't even know it. Then all of a sudden, she <laughs> said, Mr. Scott, didn't I tell you to take that hat off? Do you want to go to, to the office? And then before you know it, everybody just kind of turned around. And there it is. I took my hat off. I was bald-headed. And they laughed. And, and now, and, and now, and see, you make me feel bad. Let me tell you why. Because as a teacher, I have done that many times to a student. <laughs> and I've told them, you're going to have to take that hat off. Take that, take that hoodie off. Take that hoodie off. And they'll say, no, miss. No, miss. I can't take it off. You need to take that hoodie off. And then I'll say, have a, but you know what? I'm, I'm nice. I'll say, step outside for a minute. So they'll step outside. And I'll say, now, why can't you take that hoodie off? And they'll go like this. I said, okay, you can keep it on. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, so I know exactly what you're talking about. That does happen. Yeah, it wasn't that, it wasn't that lenient back then. It yeah, was, it was rules. It was they were real yeah. strict about it, you know. So wasn't no bucking the teacher. Wasn't yeah. none of that going on like it is today, you know. Yeah, back then you could actually get yourself some pops. Right, you right. Yes, yeah, so it was it was real back then. It was different. Yeah, so. So y'all, you 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 practiced on you and your brothers. Y'all got good, and you said you told me uh, last week that after y'all got so good, people in the neighborhood. Yeah, you start cutting, start start cutting in the neighborhood. Start yeah. cutting in the neighborhood. Start cutting at school during band. Charging during for fees, it. Yeah. To making money. So, but entrepreneur always been my thing. It's always been there. 
from yeah. selling candy, from going to bag groceries, yeah, to picking. It's it, it just been just always been. I always find a way to be a boss. So bosses are really are really born. They not right. they're not really made. They're born that way. It's just it's something in you. It's something in your gene that makes makes you that person. Well, you know what, and, 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 and I absolutely agree with you. But in a way, it's it's kind of twofold because you just you told us before that because of your situation, mm -hmm. you knew that you were going to have to figure out a way to make it happen. That nobody was going to do it for you because you were from a large family. That's right. And y'all had to just get it done. That's right. So. 25 years ago let's 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 uh fast forward 25 years okay you you are one of the most successful business owners barbershop owners in midtown third ward how did that happen take us on that path um it started from the the very first person that i cut hair up under her name was marie tillian swanson okay she's passed away now she died from Alzheimer's. Uh huh. And uh, she and she basically, I watched her. I watched her every move. I watched her every step she made. What time she got there? What time she left? How did she accumulate all these people? And right. I and I followed exactly what I seen. Right. Which meaning I woke up early. I was the first one there. I was the last one to leave. And I and I did this for years without without taking vacations. Mm. Lost my marriage behind it. That's the dedication to what to you what you were doing. Exactly yeah. because I mean, majority of the time, you know, in relationship, you need to, the person wants time. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and time is something that I, because I was so far behind it, I was trying to catch up now. Interesting that you said that, and that's something I, that I ask you on Friday if you would speak to because that's what I hear a lot of people say when they have uh, have been formerly incarcerated that they feel that they have to make up for lost time. Exactly. And you told me, and they can they can spread themselves so thin in so many different directions trying to make up for lost time. And you said that that definitely can be a mistake and as, how as tell me how definitely a mistake i mean you can't you can't we think we all can multitask yeah and multitask sounds it, it sounds like you're just a great person though but really what you're doing is you're only giving 50 percent on something and 50 percent on, on something else which you never given the 100 to the actual thing that that needs to be fixed on from the beginning right ordinary to move on to the next thing right so just like me so i would i would be doing one thing which is barber shopping yeah and then i would then i would be doing i would be doing as uh at that at that time i was trying to start my uh trash company okay so i would be missing money from the barber shop right trying to start a trash company because i'm then when the trash company is doing well then i try to get back in the barber shop then the trash right. company start falling then it's just like a back and forth thing so then finally Finally, I, I, some, something had to go. Something had said, but it's, I can't do it. I can't do both. Right. And then I say, well, you need to get yourself together. Finish getting the barbershop established well enough where it can run and sell. Right. Then move on to the next thing. Now right. you can give your one hundred percent to this. Right. Without having to juggle both at the same time. Right. Now, your barbershop started becoming successful where you were able to use some of what you were making with the barbershop you had a clientele it was running well and as a matter of fact you said your, your barbershop that you opened 25 years ago mm -hmm. you're still in the same location same location same location same location and i'm sure and i will not have you disclose any names but i'm sure you have celebrity clients probably athletes all that good stuff oh, yeah, of and course. It, it comes with time and reputation of course yeah, yes yes well, let me ask you this. At what point did you say, okay, I'm at the point now where I can go ahead and uh, look into some other types of ventures that I'm interested in? Because you have several businesses. I do. At what, at what point uh, did you say, it's okay now for me to go ahead and look into, look into diversifying some? Well, it, it, it kind of started like, not that I had more time. Uh huh. I was trying to find thing more things that can run itself without me having to be there. So be there to oh to do it. My sister says that all the time. 
My so, sister says that all the so, time. Yes. So that's when I came. So that's when I came up with, 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 with this event. I got a, a event hall, event space. Okay. Where I people use it for birthday parties, baby showers. Right. You know the whole thing, and it runs itself. Exactly. It doesn't take me to be there. It's a, it's a. Turn I got a lockbox. Yeah. Right. You can let yourself in. You can let yourself out. Right. I paid my cleaning lady to come in. It's the same lockbox. She right. let herself in. She let herself out. And I'm still able to do what I need to do. And that brings in a different kind. That brings in a different kind. It's of a life. passive income. Yeah. Yeah, of course. And it's a very good one, too. I must yeah. say. It does. It does very well. Right. And how long have you had the event space? Um, About two months. Okay. About two months. Okay. Two months. But I have had, but I. that was the one that I really, I really kind of enjoyed the most because I enjoyed going out. I enjoyed right. watching people be happy, have a good time, be right. with family. So that was the one that I really enjoyed the most. But then I had a then I also have a pallet company. So where we we get pallets from a company. Right. And we take them to another place and we sell them. So okay. we get the pallets for free. Right. And we get take it to another place where they give us money for these pallets. Okay. So they pay five dollars a pallet. We get a hundred pallets every morning. Wow. That's five hundred dollars. We wake up at four o'clock in the morning. Right. We're done by seven o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Wow. So that's yeah. before I that's before yeah. I even get to the barbershop. Right. So so basically what you're saying to people out there is that you have to you have to look for opportunities many times in places that you wouldn't even necessarily pay attention. That could be a place for an opportunity. Right. Yeah. Let me ask you this. Um the the barber trade right now is that something that you would recommend for uh for uh, people to go into especially somebody who may have had a uh a, a, um, a felony on their in their past and may have a hard time uh getting hired in a traditional position is that still or is it saturated now no 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 it's now that's it's a, always a good business but it, it takes a lot to be it takes a lot to be there for one you have to be consistent right Two, you have to know how to you not you have to know how to deal with people. Right. Three, three is is you have to it's not an overnight success. Exactly. You have to build people have to learn how to trust you. They have to know how to they and you have to be a, a more of a listener than a talker. Right. And and if you can't do those things there, you and you also have to be a craftsmanship. You also have to have visions. Skills. Yeah. You have to have vision. It's like drawing. You know, you can see the picture and you draw it. Right. So it's also art. So, but if you don't have those things, that may not be for you. Everybody is different. Everybody have a special gift that they have. Right. And you have to figure out what is your special gift? What is it that you can do that nobody can do better than you? Then, I mean, as far as what you think. Right. You know, and, and that was one of my gifts. That was one. Of, and I, and I've always knew that I was good at cutting hair. Yeah. You know, and I, and I always said that I was going to give me a barbershop and I was going to put it back in my neighborhood. Yeah. And I was show and I would show the neighborhood that, if I can do it, so any, can you. Anybody else can do it. Yeah, you know. And also, I'm I'm supply, I'm I'm giving jobs. I'm providing jobs. That's what for I was going to ask you. Yes. So you know, it's, it's so it's now everything I'm doing now is give, is for giving back. Right. I took so much out the community. That's what you know. It's funny that you should say that because one of our guests who was here, he said, "What is most important to me now." And I'm going to try to quote him on this. He said, "What's most important to me now is being a part." of a vital part of building the community that I once worked so hard to destroy. Exactly. That exactly. and that was that was powerful when he said that. But now as a successful entrepreneur who has uh, several businesses if you could sit down with someone who is just starting out whether they have been formally incarcerated <laughs> or not and you could give them three bullet points pieces of advice. Okay that uh that they could use in order to start what three things would you tell them first of all you gotta you gotta find god you have yes. to you have to find god god is god is what gives you that extra step it gives you that Absolutely. humbleness it gives you the direction it gives you patience it gives you everything that you need without him there is no there is no you right that's the first, that's the most first, first thing. And you have the second thing, 
you have to not you have you have to gain knowledge you have to and you have to start reading you have to start researching things you have to figure it out you know that's number two the third the third thing i the third thing i would say is love yourself yeah love yourself and understand that you you deserve more right right and you can be more if you love yourself you know, Roy, I want to ask you this, and this just kind of came to me, but I think it's 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 powerful, and I want you to speak to this because I think um, that we don't we don't think about this en enough. How many of your peers did you see not actually make it out of the neighborhood or make it to adulthood? because of the the rough situation they had to endure i watch a lot of them i watch i watch a lot of my close friends they didn't make they didn't they didn't yeah. make it a lot of them got a lot of time you yeah. know and, and and some didn't make it back out some made it back out and they doing they doing pretty well for themselves because at some at some point in time they changed the way they thought right the your thought pattern changed right now all of a sudden now you realize this is not working if it if it's not working it's just not working yeah time to move on right time to time to lose time to lose the love for money and that's, yeah. and that's because that becomes the big issue you fall in love with money on 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 the end that i we, we were on it was the money that we right. that you love so much you're like i love this money money is everything to me you know but then once you lose the love for money is when money starts to come that's true because you're doing what you what you are, are doing because of the love for it exactly yeah and one thing about i learned about money is is that money hate to be chased money don't like Explain to be that. chased it doesn't mean exactly what it is when you chasing money trying to get money right. you can't never get it but as soon as you don't need it money just falls in your lap it comes through the door you're trying to pull hey man i just got a little money man you all right you need something you good i'm like no nah, i'm good but yeah. but when you needed it he, yeah you Where was he? He, he never came. Yeah. You know, and everything is kind of at a, at a is, everything is kind of backwards right now. You know, yeah. it is. So, you know, so people are starting to do things at the, at the norm. So you look, I would start a business. I would start marketing first. Exactly. I wouldn't start. I wouldn't open up my business first. I would start marketing first. Right. Then I would, then I was, then I would figure out what people actually want in, in my business. Yes. Now I know how to, how to, how to, fix my foundation for my business right knowing that you knowing that it's going to be a need for that particular business exactly then i would open up the business see but usually people would do this first open up the business then try to figure out what people want yeah and then try to do your marketing yeah and you could you could have wasted a lot of money by that time oh yeah well, what is it you'll fail yeah you'll fail because now because marketing was last marketing should have been first right because marketing is everything for your business right Without without you marketing your business, don't nobody know that your business even exists. That's right. So you have to let people know ahead of time. Hey, I'm about to open a barbershop soon. Hey, my barbershop is gonna be open real soon. You know, you you, you letting people know it. You yeah. put it on Facebook. You put it on Instagram. You put it on Twitter. You put yeah. it on TikTok. You know, and people are starting to see it. Right. And eventually, you you get you asking questions. What would you think would be a good name for my barbershop? Boom. Yeah. And then for you know how you get about 15, 16 people engaged on it. It's yeah. Give you yeah. different names, you know. Boom. The next day you put it, you give another question. <clears throat> what 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 color do you think the barbershop should be? Should it be white? Should it be black? Should yeah. it be town? Now you're getting everybody engaged in your business. Right. Now they you haven't even opened it up yet. And it's a discussion about it. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. So now people are starting to now they so then the next question is when are you gonna open it? Right. What I mean, have you have you have you got your LLC yet? Yeah. You know, have you have you figured out the name? Have you got your duns and breads for your credit? Right. You know, are you going to do this by cash? Or are you going to do yes. it by somebody else is going to invest in it? You know, so now everybody's engaged. When you do open it, now you have a grand opening. Now everybody been waiting on it because you've been talking about it for about three to four months already that you're yeah. going to do it. Yeah. So now everybody knows about it. So now all of a sudden, now your business is. You having people coming in out of the blue moon that you didn't even know that were really involved in. You'd be like, man, I have been following you. I've been watching. I've been engaging. Man, I'm liking the shot. Oh, you use that name. You yeah. use the name that we said use. You know, yeah. of course. And, you know, and and that's just how business go. It goes that way. It's just everything is backwards, though. That's exactly what I was saying. And you know what? I you you are absolutely right. And I think those are real good nuggets that you that you uh, gave to people who are just starting out. 
uh, regardless of what the, what the situation is, because the, the foundation is the same. The foundation is the same. Now, something else that I found that was extremely unique about you is that you, after you went and, and did your time, you have raised, successfully raised seven daughters. What was that like? Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, seven daughters. Was, if you didn't, if you didn't shave your head, probably every strand of your hair would already be gone. It was, it was different. It yeah. was very different. Every all seven times I was shooting for a boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was shooting for a boy. I mean, I changed mamas. I did the whole work trying to get it. <laughs> I did it with the socks on, with the socks off. You know, a little roughness here, and a little, little not doing so much then. <laughs> So what was what was that like having to be uh, well, first of all having to explain your 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 past to your daughters because at, at some point it came up I'm sure where they ask about it of course of course I mean yeah. is, there's only one way to be only one way to, to deal with kids is just be honest with them because if you don't be honest with them they'll go some they'll go they'll end up going wandering off to someone else looking for the honesty looking for yes. the for the approval looking for the justification of things so you can't just lie and be like hey if you kiss a boy you'll get pregnant. Right. Yeah. No, that's not a thing. You know, yeah. you have to be direct. Hey, this is what happens when two people get together, such and such, such, yeah. such, such, you know, we won't get yeah. into all that though, but it's to be honest with the kids. Be and so how did you kids. explain, how did you explain um, having to go to prison to your daughters? When they um, say, daddy, where were you? Yeah. You know? Well, I went to college. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I've heard that. Yeah. I went to college, you know, but then of course, kids are not dumb. They're right. smart. They're right. very smart. They hear your mama. Uh, will you accept the collect call from Roy? Yeah. Yes, I accept it. Yeah. Hey, or say, oh, are you, is this Harris County Jail? Will you right. accept the collect call from Roy? So now they're right. in jail. Right. So now they know where you're at. Yeah. You know, but you have to, then you explain to me, hey, I made dumb moves. I made dumb decisions in my life. Right. And hopefully, and hopefully my decisions won't affect you. Exactly. Hopefully it'll keep you from making the same wrong decisions that I'm making. So if you would please just do me one favor, my children. Yeah. Listen to me. Let me take you down a path where you don't have to go down the path I went. Right. You know, and that was, and by the grace of God, all of them been doing pretty good. That's awesome. They've been doing good. So somewhere down that line. It, you did something right. I did something that, right. That's right. Well, you know, really what we're trying to, to target in on with this particular podcast is highlighting success stories of people who have maybe come up on their success in a different direction. Uh, the formerly incarcerated. Mm -hmm. And one way that we know is going to be very important, especially in this political climate, is for people to be able to exercise the rights that they have and to, uh, to, to, to go out and reclaim what is rightfully theirs after they've been incarcerated. And that's the right to vote. But one thing that you brought up and that I know is extremely, extremely important is that what, when someone has been incarcerated, once they get out, they need to do their they need to do their homework. It's just not about casting a vote. Right. It's about doing your homework to know that all politics are local. And when you go out and you vote in all of the elections that affect your immediate community, that you can actually have a hand in the laws that are going to affect your family directly. Yes, it will. It will. It would definitely if, if, if you don't get out and vote. The people, the, the same people that that you should be voting for, they have the same idea as you. They understand you. But if you don't vote for them and they don't get in, that's how we end up in poverty, though. Yeah, we end up we end up stuck because we didn't we didn't that one vote just could have made a difference or even a thousand people. Just say a thousand people just didn't vote. That thousand would have made a big difference. So who would have won and who wouldn't have won? Yeah, and and think about it like this, Roy. This is the this is the conversation that we had last week, and I was saying if, if you could if you could kind of you know shed a little bit of your insight on this because what what we just talked about today is the fact that voting has always been even before you made your missteps. Voting has always been a part of your family yes. and, and knowing that that was an important thing. But how 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 important is it that people see that maybe one vote won't make a difference but 
possibly for those people who have been incarcerated, the way that people are sentenced, the way that people, um, the, the different types of, of, of charges that are that are considered uh, 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 for, for heavier sentences. Or, right. See, we vote on people who, who make those laws. We sure did. Yes. We sure did. And, um, you know, one of our guests was here week before last, and he said he was speaking with one of his friends who um, who was just uh, being released from prison recently. Mm -hmm. And this was the conversation. This guy said, you know, the first time I went to jail, I got two years. And, this, and, and, and I went to jail, came back out, wasn't changed that much. Very much like what you just said. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to be a little smarter than, you know, my next time out. Well, the next time he was sentenced to 25 years. And he said, you know what? I can tell you this. If they'd given me that 25 years the first time, I never would have come back. I never would have come back because I would have at least had time to grow up a little bit and think about what I was doing and think about my life as a felon and in prison and probably would have had the opportunity to make some different decisions because I was such a young guy going in. And so many times the, the, the youth aspect of it is is uh what brings people back they think yeah. they may think they're a little bit ahead of the game yeah you know yeah and, and that's that's basically what he said he said if i had if i had gotten a heavier sentence the first time then i probably wouldn't have come back yeah it's a big problem something it's a big problem but like i said it goes back again but if you don't have a found you don't have you don't have help yeah you come home to nothing so now you go to the halfway house. You got fifty dollars. Now you're trying to find yourself a job with fifty dollars, and you have to buy yourself something to wear to, to even be presentable. You have to right. get a haircut. Yeah. You have to get all these things, but you have no money. Yeah. So what do you? So how do you? So what do you do? Do you go back into the same circle all over again, even right. though you knew you just did this time? Right. But I don't have help. I don't have nothing that I can fall on that would help me. So of course you fall back into the same trap, and now all of a sudden now you get a life sentence. Exactly. That's that's so. That's, so really yeah. the, but the system is made for us to fail. That's that's exactly what. Uh, hello, Kyle. That's exactly what what Kyle was saying when he was here. He, and he, this is what he said. His friend said too that the system was made for you to return. It was. It was. Yeah. I mean, I mean, and it goes further, further back than that. Right. There was another, no, another form of enslaving black people. Yeah. You know, people were going, going to jail for jaywalking and they were getting six, 10 years for jaywalking. Yeah. So they were just how they would get the free labor right. out of, out of us back then. Right. Because now, now suddenly now you can't get a job. You can't do nothing. Now you got to come on back and do right. whatever you do. You'll come back and right. we'll get some more free labor out of you. Right. You know, so the system was built that way. It was it was built for us to fail. So with that being said, with that being said, yes, it is important that people realize that once you have a felony, once you have a felony, yes, after your sentence, after your parole has been fully discharged, look into your rights, ladies and gentlemen. Um, our our one of our guests, Joel, said. He automatically, once he was discharged, he got a letter in the mail and it said, your right to vote has been restored. And he didn't even open the letter the, when it first came. He happened to be looking there, looking into the uh, the mail a couple of months later and he saw that. But that is something that you uh, do have. If you have been fully discharged from your parole, you may vote. We have got two uh, voter registration opportunities that are coming up very, very shortly. And we're going to be giving you that information. But Roy, um, if you were talking to someone right now who was, who was watching mm -hmm. and, uh, and <clears throat> they are saying that my vote won't count. You know, and I prepared myself for this. Yeah, I did. So I went home Yeah, and I wrote, I wrote down some thoughts. Good. And I asked some people at the barbershop about it. And I and the and these and these are the same, these are the, the these are the answers. Yes. It Tell says us. voting has potentially potentially to, to shape the country future. Okay. 
the problems that people have. Sometimes, sometimes you wait too late to let your documents to get your documents together. Yes. Number two, you feel overwhelmed. Yeah. Missing missing important deadlines. Uh, forgetting to update your voting information. Yes. So those are like the four things that kept coming up. Right. During this whole, during the, from the time that I talked to you to now, yeah. these are the things that kept coming up over and over again, why people was not voting. Yes. And not getting registered. Not getting registered. Right. Not registering. Not preparing their self. Yeah. So it's just like everything else. So, you know, you got to interview next week. So, you know, okay, I'm going to have to need a haircut. I need to make sure I have my pants and my shirt already. Right. Already, it's, That's the same way as voting. Yeah. You have to prepare yourself for when it's time. Right. So that when it's ahead of time. Ahead of time. Yeah. So that when it's time, it's done. Exactly. Exactly. And and Roy is Roy is so absolutely right. And those are some of the things that we've touched on. A couple of the things that we touched on are some of the things our guest brought up two weeks ago. I didn't even realize this, Roy, but this was brought up. One of the things that uh, that uh, Damien said uh, when he uh, came on is that uh, Damien Walker, what he said is that sometimes people may when they go down to TDC, they may have one or two different or three different aliases. And, and I do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do. And what they, so perfect, perfect. So what did you have to do when you came out and you had to actually make sure that your, that your given name was restored for you to be able to register to vote? How difficult was that process? And what was the process that you had to go through? Well, all the nicknames just come from you on what how how people know you. Hey, Red. What's up, Carlos? Yeah. What's up, Paris? So those were all the nicknames that I had in the street because the the business that you're in, you never want nobody to know your full information. Okay. So of course, so you'd be like, Oh yeah, Roy. Oh yeah, his last name Lascano. Yeah. Oh yeah, he said on CDs over there. Right. So of course, yeah. so even if somebody did. Say, well, his name is Paris, and then of course, the person, hey, what's up, Paris? You like, do I know you? Yeah, you know, is your name yeah. Paris? And be like, nah, that ain't me. Yeah, and then all of a sudden, they damn you up, and they look at your drive license, but it don't say Paris, so they say it's the wrong person, right? But actually, no, it was the right person, but that's why everybody used yeah. the alias name, yeah. So, how, how hard was it for you to, uh, you know, to so down at, yeah, well, no, well, down at T uh, when you were in prison, what name was on the paperwork? When you were in prison, oh, you see what I'm saying? Was Latroy, it Latroy Theo Anderson? That was my. That was my. Well, see, back then it was different. Wow. Back then they didn't. They didn't. They only had where well, you can fingerprint. Right. But it wasn't computer. Exactly. It, everything was manually. Okay. Everything was manual. So they. So my first time, they didn't know who I really was. You didn't give them the correct name. I didn't give them the correct name. Got you. But that meant nothing. They had the fingerprints. Right. Okay. So even though you gave a fake name, but they still had your fingerprints. Right. And then once it was, they were able to load your fingerprints into the document, in, into the system. Right. No matter what name you use, they knew who you were anyway. Exactly. Exactly. But of course you did. I didn't know that, but you know, but now I know. But right. So now when you first come into jail, now they have a, a, a actual computer where you put your thumb on and everything it about you, your whole information comes pops up. up. Okay. Now when you were, when you were Latroy, Theo Anderson, right, and you got out, and you had to go and and you said it. I'm sure your family was on you. You had to go and register and get yourself registered to vote once you were discharged. Mm -hmm. And that was the name on your paperwork. What was the first step that you did? You have to go back down no, to you the didn't, you, didn't, you didn't have to really, you didn't really have to do nothing. Your name is your name. You can't just get rid of that name and just say, "Oh, I'm I'm not using that name. This is the name that I'm using." Okay. So when I came out, it was this is okay. I'm still Roy. I'm still Roy. So you could go and get your driver's license. You can still license go get with... your driver's license because your birth certificate had birth certificate and social security. Okay. Okay. So those are those two things have never changed. You, no Even matter though how, it may have been something different on their on, paperwork on, at TD. in in TDC is wow. different. Yeah, but that had nothing to do with when you when you're actually out. Okay. Yeah, when you have now you got birth certificate and you got your um your uh, social security card. Okay. And that's what you take down to get your driver license, your ID, right. whatever, whatever it is. Yeah. So you're so that's that's never that was never the problem. The problem was rebuilding. 
Yeah. Was getting people to trust you again. Yeah. Knowing that you mean well this time. Yeah. You know, and even though. How hard was that? Ah, uh, it's hard. It's yeah. hard because now you have to start. Uh, you have to start from as far as getting a place to live. Now you have to find a a, a, a a one owner owner to rent from him and can't really rent from the complex itself. Got you. So you have to, and they have to trust you to do it. Yeah. You know, of course he wants, he wants, instead of it being a 500, he wants a thousand dollar deposit. Right. Instead of being a 500 for the first month, he wants a thousand dollars, you know? Wow. So everything is because now you're building your trust again. Right. So now and how once, long does that kind of situation last? It can last, it can last up to four or five years before wow. you can actually get it. You know, it just, for sure, two years, because you'll get you a two-year lease. Right. And then after the two years up, hey, you just say, hey, you know what? I'm giving you my 30-day notice. I'll be moving. Right. And so now, I guess, if you wouldn't mind, would you please write me a, 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 a form saying that I was a great tenant and that I paid on time? Right. So now I have a form of document showing that that I'm 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 doing good again. Trustworthy, I, yeah. I'm trustworthy of, of having a place to live. Yeah. You know that I that I took care of my business. I paid on time. I was right. never late. You know. So now you're starting to build. It's a building process to get exactly. there. Exactly. You know. But 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 it can be done. Oh, of course. Yes. Yeah. It, it takes work. Yeah. But it can be done. Okay. But you well you know what Roy, I, I don't even know I, I don't even know what to say. I want to thank you so much for sharing your story tonight because. People need to know that when they have missteps in their lives, that it's not the end of the road. Yours actually was the beginning of your real success. It was. Of you actually carving out your success. And can you, before we before we leave, and I'm going to make this announcement of, of something that's, that's really great coming up. But before we leave, can you tell people how to get in contact with you? The, the the name of the shop, the address, mm -hmm. if they want to connect with you on social media, um, kind of give yeah. us some information on how we could do that. Yeah, well, you can uh, go to my Instagram. You can go to my Twitter. You can go to my TikTok. It's Royal World 2020. It's real simple. Uh, my barbershop is in Third Ward out for Emancipation and Barbie. It's 4215 Emancipation. And um, what's the name of it? Third Ward's Finest Cuts. <laughs> Third Ward's Finest Cuts. Okay. Yeah, and if you want to, I mean, just come up to the barbershop and just ask for Roy and, and I'll be there. And, and like I said, anything you have problems with, if you want to help, think I can help you, then, you know, swing by. I'll do what I can for you, you know? And also don't forget, subscribe, subscribe. We need that. <laughs> subscribe for this, you know, because yes. uh, cause what she's, what she's given us, she's given us a lot of, a lot of help for our community to help others that can help their self. So subscribe. If you see it, subscribe and press the button. Ping, ping, ping. Yes, ping. absolutely, absolutely do that. And the thing about it is, guys, it is a, a matter of reaching out and, and, and helping someone. A lot of times, depending on people's situations, a lot of people don't necessarily even want to be bothered with, with, with someone who may have been formerly incarcerated. Or they, they may do it simply because they don't know how to help someone. But that's why I want to uh, bring on people like Roy and people like Damien and people like Kyle and, and Quincy and Vaughn and some of the other people who have been entrepreneurs who've come on the show so that they can see that that it, it doesn't matter what is behind you. It doesn't matter what is behind you. It's what you see in front of you that you want your life to be. And that's what it's all about. And voting is just one of those first steps. It's one of those first steps. It's an important step. But before we go, I don't know. I only have about, ah, oh, I'm over time. I only have about a couple of seconds. But um, I was given this flyer. And actually, Roy came in with the same flyer. Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church, their jail and prison ministry, is having a free resource fair. It's for formerly incarcerated men and women. Um, the resources include job placement and preparation, housing placement services. That's important based on what Roy just said. Maybe they'll help you come through some of those hurdles um, if, if for someone you, you know or, or yourself. Uh, education and trade school resources, counseling services, men and women's clothing. All of this is free, free food and much more. It's Saturday, April 23rd from 9 a.m. until 1 p.m. at Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. And it's at 3810 Ruth Street in Houston, Texas, 77004. 
reach out to us, guys. If you if you need to contact Roy, um, definitely leave me a message. Let me know that you need to contact him. I will put you in contact with him. Mm -hmm. He's giving you his information. Again, thank you so much for joining us. I am always going to try to feature someone I feel will be inspirational, who can give you some insight and help you get to where you want to be because they've walked in those shoes before. Thank you so much. And I'll see you next week on Crystal Left Texas. Bye-bye.